Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube and Chucky2009. And tonight I'm out here with Peter Zila, a.k.a. Schneetiga77. I can't pronounce that. All right. Whatever it is. <laughs> okay. And we bring you one more piece of industrial, uh, industrial fabrication, let's say, that we have been into. We have been into heavy-duty flux core wire. Um, now let's go to metal removal. Um, we know there's plasma cutters, there's blow torches, and there's a tool called the air arc or the carbon air arc. And um, these carbon air arcs, there's something special about the way how they work rather than a plasma cutter or a torch. So let, um, let me fill you in what we have here. Okay. These carbon rods here, they create electrically with a constant current power source like a stick welder. They create a molten puddle when it's touched to the metal. And there's little air jets down here. And the air is blowing the molten puddle away. What this does is, it's like reverse stick welding, let's say. Or shaving material off. When you have your plate and you have your plasma cutter or you have a blow torch, the flame usually blows through sometimes as little as like half an inch sometimes as much as two or three or several inches the okay. special thing about the air arc is the carbon rod here creates a molten puddle air is coming down behind the rod blowing the puddle out and this basically causes it to just like shave material off the top not bad. So we can either remove layers of material or even like remove a weld, ideally with a little bit skill, without damaging the parent material that the weld is attached to. All right. So this is a really loud process, so let's get the earplugs in. Okay. I hear it's pretty bright too. This is not something you want to use Shade 5s for. It's pretty bright. You most certainly don't want to use a Shade 5. You, know? right. you would consider a 9 or a 10 for sure. Okay. And. Um, it's loud, sparks everywhere. I would recommend long sleeves, a full welding hood, and gloves. That is one of the applications I really like to use uh, uh, an automatic hood because you can go there with a bright view window and see when you touch it, it turns automatically dark. It's a lot, it's a lot easier than using a fixed shade on this. All right. Sure. Now, since we don't have a stick welder that puts out 250, 280 amps, what we will do is we will use this MIG welder, and I know what you're going to say. It is a constant voltage power source, but I guess it's constant current too, because the current is always 280 amps. Mm -hmm. So we adjust the voltage all the way up, the current is already automatic all the way up, and this way we will have sufficient power to air arc. All right, okay. The way how this is set up is, we will unplug the MIG gun, we will plug the air arc gun into where the MIG gun was, Okay. turn the wire speed down to zero, since we learned it's not feeding any wire then, turn the volts all the way up, and set the machine to continuous operation, which like means... trigger hold. We, yep, trigger hold. All right. We will pull the trigger once, And now, there's no wire feeding. The electrode is cold because we plugged the air arc torch in. Okay. We will turn the gas tank off. And now we have power at this torch. All right. What happens if you don't have a MIG welder with those dense plugs? And then you have to take a cable, crimp on lugs, and make cables, and it just um, does not help to simplify your operation. <laughs> but if you have a stick welder, like a 250 amp stick welder, you're in good shape. If you have a bus box, you either need a rectifier or specialty electrodes. So you want a DC stick welder for this process, ideally. Okay. So I, I notice you're not putting that electrode in there all the way back like you would a 7018 or something. No, what you you only want to heat as much of the electrode up as you kind of need. Okay. Otherwise, the electrode gets too brittle and feed more out as you need. Okay. If you need to reach into a remote spot, you can do this, but with the air jets and the airflow being closer to the molten puddle, your cutting efficiency is higher. Okay.
Ah, you just gouged right through it. What is really important is your travel speed is always forward with the air blowing behind, never back up. You will get carbon deposits in the material that you cannot weld over, that you cannot gouge over, then it's back to the good old grinder and grind it all out till it's clean. Oh, if you gouge the right way, if you have the right electrode and you have the right um, amperage to run it at the right technique, it leaves a clean trail where you can go over rust, paint, and clean the material off and weld right over that air arc area. Excellent. That sounded kind of sputtery a few times. Do so you think that's just because we're running 240 amps? Yeah, we're. It's a constant voltage power source. It's not exactly the most ideal scenario to run these electrodes. All right. And maybe I'm a little bit rusty. Normally, I gouge up of an engine drive, and I have other power available. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Pete. Uh, if you could pronounce your channel's name. Oh, wait. Here we go. Here we go. We're not done yet, YouTube. This is an MTS machine, make, take, stick, all in one, <laughs> the HTP 2400. <laughs> Gotta love it, wow. So basically you're saying, as opposed to being able to control the uh, the amperage like you get a stick machine, it's kind of just full power all the time. It's full power all the time, yes. All right, that's the main difference. That's the main difference. Excellent. Okay, well, if you could just pronounce your channel again, or... Schneetiga77. All right, I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description. A big thanks to Pete for uh, his nice arc air demonstration and as always youtube thanks for watching yeehaw yeehaw don't yeehaw. forget to rate comment and subscribe for more yeehaw